Yep. Okay, so what if you're making prayers uh, for an outcome in a situation and, and there's anger at God because nothing's happening? Well, for me, um, I mean, this is just the way I see it. Um, some things get let go of quickly and some things get low of, uh, slowly. Ang well, anger at God, well, anger at God is a feeling. Uh, so there's uh, allowing the feelings and not making a story will help to dissipate it. Wanting an outcome, uh, so there's uh, I surrender to God my outcome in this relationship. And I pray for forgiveness, transcendence and miracles. Um, sometimes there can be, uh, in my view, like heavy relationships which you can't get rid of very easily. But the thing is there, it's the, the idea that creates uh, a lot of the Course in Miracles lessons are really, really good. And I'll sort of explain it in this way. It's like what creates uh, heaviness in relationships is that there is meaning and attachment in the relationship. So meaning and attachment creates heaviness. So if there is no value ascribed or meaning to the relationship, then, the, then it ceases to be a thing that the individual is responsible for. So if, I, if let's say I had a relationship with someone and I thought I was responsible for that person, i.e. my identification with my ego and my body, I'm the one who has the power to actually look after them and it's my responsibility and that's very, very heavy. So I can let that go uh, through, I mean all the course lessons will help, but um, uh, letting, uh, letting go of the meaning. So um, it's not being responsible for that person and yet, and yet what does that mean? Well what are the beliefs, you know, if there's a belief like I'm responsible, I surrender my belief that I'm responsible for looking after this person. Uh, I'm an infinite being, or God did not create my responsibility for this person, so it's not real. It just means that there is no responsibility from the level of the person. It doesn't mean one can't, one isn't there, but one is not personally responsible, so it's God's responsible. So you let go of the outcome. So there, there could be an outcome. Often, if there's uh, attachment, there's a lot of stuff being held on to, like. Well, if I don't personally look after them, then they're going to die and, and fall to pieces and I'm responsible for making sure and if without me, they, they can't exist and, uh, and uh, so I have to constantly think about them and be there for them. Uh, so that then it's just either surrendering that, letting that go. I personally find 12-step fellowships, uh, some of the 12-step fellowships could be useful in just sharing and getting the power of the rooms to help uh, let go, having spiritual bodies to help let go of the emotional attachment. Uh, I personally uh, believe and had experiences almost of past lives. So just praying, you know, there may be a past life. Uh, so, I, uh, so if you reverse karma, you just reverse it. So I call it the uh, uh, Dr. Hawkins anti-karma prayer. So let's say, I pray for forgiveness for the one in me who in this lifetime and past lifetimes uh, has been a burden to others. And I pray for forgiveness uh, for that. Anger at God. Well, uh, uh, in the, uh, there's the feelings, allowing the feelings and not making a story about it will dissipate some of the anger. Also, uh, just the prayers, you know, um, uh, I... I, I um, I surrender to God uh, my anger that God's not doing what I want uh, and answering my prayers. Uh, I'm an infinite being or I cancel or I surrender to God my anger at God for not uh, giving me the outcomes I want uh, in the time scales I want and I pray for forgiveness, transcendence and miracles. The thing that I'm doing a lot of is prayers which is what I call Praying so much with so many repetitions so regularly throughout the day that you become bored of holding on to it. It's like uh, I, I just can't be bothered to say. It's like if you do like uh, several hours of I surrender to God this person in uh, surrender this person into into your arms and I pray for forgiveness transcendence miracles. You try doing that every day for like an hour, 
eventually your ego will go, I can't, I can't be bothered to think about that person or, or, or make a story about that person. So uh, that's a way of making the story and the person meaningless. Uh, why is, is the ego will come up and say, well, that's cruel. If, if, if there's no attachment and no meaning and I'm not there to rescue the person, then surely that's cruelty, that's not love. But uh, I would say, the, in my experience, the paradox is true. The more you let go, uh, i.e. of the vested interests or the outcomes of the attachments, the more miracles uh, tend to happen in the relationship. And the other person tends to prosper more, and you tend to prosper more, uh, even though uh, through letting go than actually being responsible. So it's an, it doesn't seem logical to the ego, but that is the, the thing of miracles and letting go. Uh, it's actually, or from Hawkins' work, it would be the level of consciousness. So the level of consciousness or the absence of the personal ego or experience of the ego is that which creates um, miracles. So miracles are not created by the ego. Miracles occur due to absence of ego. So uh, the ego has not got the power to uh, perform a miracle. Um, also, um, no, I share my experience. Like uh, I was um, with my mother who and my father. Uh, for me, it would be like I would do a lot of prayers and letting go of outcomes, expectations. I did this thing actually. It might be useful. I did this thing of like trying to completely let go of an attachment is to bring forward the grief of letting them go completely while you're still in a relationship. So it goes, um, so it's like even though I was looking after my father for some years, it would be like, well, you know, I'm going to feel, feel out all my attachment, my grief, my tears, my sadness as if he's gone. And I'm going to do it now while he's alive. Uh, so that you get to the point which is um, whether they stay or, or go, it's immaterial because you're totally free of them. So it'd be like if my dad dies today and I never see him again, I've done, I've done the process of letting go, it, it, it's absolutely fine. It's like being neutrality, whether they're here or not here, whether they die or not die. Uh, and there's a great freedom in not having that uh, personal, in personal attachment or investment or personal responsibility for the individual. And for me that is true love. True love is the absence of ego. Uh, and then allowing stuff. Um, also for me, I think, what if you're praying and the miracle that you want doesn't happen very quickly or is taking forever or doesn't seem to be coming? So that, that for me is then, um, uh, there can be an acceptance that maybe for some reason one has to be with that person, but one can, um, what I, I call it, disappearing the person. So it's like, um, if I let go of all the story and that I'm personally responsible and all outcomes, uh, you can, I did this with my mother because I used to get very triggered with my mother. So it's like, well, the vocal tone of my mother is meaningless. It actually has no meaning. If, if it's raining or if my mother's speaking, there's actually no difference. So I'm going to let go of that so that it doesn't trigger me. Uh, her facial expressions, her words, um, whether she lives or dies, it's all meaningless. So that's letting go of the personal projections or specialness that the ego has. So it's like uh, when something, and I was speaking to someone earlier today, it's like a tissue box. You know, when something is uh, made meaningless, even if it's there, it's not there. Uh, meaning it's so meaningless that it doesn't create any stress or tension if the tissue box uh, disappears or gets deformed or crushed or, or I never see the tissue box again, it's like there's no tracking. It's not a thing that I can, I can only get drama and heaviness around an object if there's any projection of specialness or meaning. So sometimes it can be intuited like it could be God's will that one has to stay, but it doesn't mean I have to hold on to my projections and my personal story. Uh, about that individual. In fact, for me, it was like with my mother, I was trying to disappear so that she doesn't exist, and yet there's relationship. Uh, and that's that. So let me try and explain that. So if there's no charge with an individual, like 
if there's a person, if I'm walking down the street and there's another person walking down the street, um, and uh, this body walks past them and they walk past me, there's no, it's like within a moment, and even if something was said like hi, and and that the body replied hi, nothing is tracked. There's no, no experience is kept. So it's very it's very empty of meaning or a heavy story or drama or anything. In fact, the interaction is neutral or meaningless and therefore it's not really registered. Things which are meaningless don't really register even though there's interactions because there's no like, there's no personal story whether the person likes me or doesn't like me, whether the person drops down dead. It's, it sounds a bit weird what I'm saying or not. It's like everything comes out of freedom. There isn't any pre-existing projection or story or meaning that that person has on a I'm a meaningful individual having a special relationship with another meaningful individual. And that ceases to exist. So everything comes out of essence or beingness or oneness as opposed to there being a me having a story with another person. Uh, if, if you're okay to talk on... Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, if... If you... I mean, you're speaking about the behaviour or facial expressions of yeah. your mother triggering you and having to detach from that, that that's right, yeah. part of the story. What if that person, what if, what if when you are not, when you're not playing the game, so to speak, yes. when you decide I'm not going to buy into this story, this drama has nothing to do with me, Yes. but that detachment then in turn triggers them to start fighting for more attention and to be reacting and using that detachment as a weapon, as against, so so it's like there's a there's a dub, there's another side to this. It's like if I'm like, well, I'm not getting into this. I'm not playing this drama. I'm not playing this game. Because you don't love me. I know you hate me. Look at the way you don't give a shit. This is just cruel that you're ignoring my. So so, is this okay for this to be? At this level, okay, yes, yeah, yes. Okay. So if it gets, if it's like that. How, what is the appropriate way to continue? It's like layers, you've got to detach from that and then you've got to detach from that. That's right, that's the answer. Yeah. And then at some point, I mean, it's... And personally, I find it almost to the point where you think, well, for the sake of a quiet life, I'm just going to... Okay, what do you want? Oh, let's play the drama game because this has got to the point where I am... I'm, I, like, I do not have the spiritual batteries charged up enough to be so out of... Out of away from this when it's actually screaming in my face. Yes, I mean, uh, what you said was my experience as well. As soon mm. as I tried to not detach, my mother would, you know, there was like political stuff she'd watch on TV, which I didn't agree, and she knew I didn't agree with that. And when I wouldn't try and make an opinion, she'd try and pull me in. Mm. It's like, you're not going to get away with not <laughs> saying anything about this or trying to change the topic. So it's like, then I had to work on detaching from her trying to pull me in. Mm. to like you can't just detach that easily I'm going to hook you into into the story and the drama mm. so I had to do that so and I agree it's very very draining and it, and it, uh, and uh, but then you know for me then there's the thing of like recharging myself spiritually in spiritual groups through spiritual practice uh, through having yeah. fellows through having some kind of spiritually nourishing support network so that I have to go in if you like into the war zone where potential triggers may come up and then I find oh there's a new trigger now that I've let go of these triggers <laughs> and she's not going to pick me up on these triggers but she's going to try and find other triggers so then I have to like okay that's meaningless then I, I can moan to my spiritual friends I can do the course of miracles and whatever's coming up until until those triggers are transcended and then you know eventually what happened was at the end and it took five years uh, uh, it did take a long time with my mother but Eventually, the relationship, when there was nothing that was triggering, and she was totally meaningless, it was like a miracle happened, and the relationship became loving, because there was nothing. There was nothing, and I, what the experience was actually quite bizarre, and I now see it having done it. It's like when you don't get triggered by someone, and you start letting go of all the triggers, uh, uh, the relationship becomes automatically more loving. So it's, I can now see that. By having pre-installed judgments of heaviness and drama, you're, cut, you're cutting the love off them and they can't heal until you let that stuff go. And then suddenly they feel more love uh, by, not have, by, by me 
dealing with my projections of that person, they also go to a higher level of love and there's healing. And the relationship became absolutely loving and there was no arguments. But that took five years of just doing the type of things of like, okay, I've got to let you work a lot on these triggers and the new triggers come up and then you work on those triggers and then other triggers come up and you work on those. But it was a thing like everything in the world is meaningless from A Course in Miracles. So the only reason I'm getting pulled into the drama, like a facial expression, a voice tone, um, suddenly my internal baggage, the person may die or I'm responsible. And so you, you make those internal and, and seemingly external triggers meaningless and then new triggers come up and then it's like you're clearing. It's like uh, the clearing thing and, I, and I'm pretty sure that's what um, I share it here, there's some new people. Um, uh, what was the thing? Yes, Dr. Hugh Len. I'll just go on that. You know, so there's uh, some of you may know the famous story. Some, most of us know it here. Dr. Hugh Len, famous story, true, true story, of a guy who got in Hawaii. There was a prison full of violent convicts, killers, murderers, and this guy is like a saint. This guy gave him the um, the prison files. He didn't go actually meet them. You know, this guy's an axe murderer, this guy likes running over people, of all the people in the prison. And all he did was, he saw what they'd done, and then he just, he just forgave them and let go of the story within him. And that prison in how it's documented, everyone left the prison and got well. And uh, that was done just through. So, that brings on the thing that there is no two. Me and my mother are not really two in truth. So if I let go of all my projections, it's also having an effect on them, even though they seem to be separate. And they became a miraculously loving relationship. But not through her changing. Uh, it was on me letting go of the perceptions uh, that uh, my, my intention was, she can scream, she can shout, she can do whatever she wants, but there's nothing, it's like nothing's happening. Because if there's no meaning to what voice tone she used, if there's no meaning to what facial expression she has, that, that's totally meaningless. Also, the word mother is meaningless, so she's not my mother, you know. Uh, so that becomes meaningless, and all the projections that go with the word and the labeling of mother, uh, death, uh, facial expressions, all associations, you just make those meaningless. So the intention at the beginning of the five years was like she can scream, do whatever she likes, uh, it, won't, it won't pull me out of the infinite. But my experience was actually, as I did the work, she became more and more loving and eventually there was no arguments. So that was not my outcome, to make her loving, but that's what, what was the experience at the end of it. Okay, thank you. Thank you.